let's start the tour with my absolute favorite thing that's happening right now. These oriental poppies are about to open. They are so gorgeous. I don't remember the name of them. If I can find the original tag, I'll post it on the screen. I'm not 100% certain, but I know they're perennial and they are oriental poppies. And these are the ones I did the video about how to transplant an oriental perennial poppy. I'll link that in the description. They are so gorgeous. Let's, let's take a closer look at these beautiful flowers. So here's a, another view of the poppies. They are so beautiful. They have a lovely pastel pink and it is just gorgeous. And the center is a dark, dark purple. You could almost say it's black, but it's actually like a super dark purple and it's so lovely. I'm a huge purple fan. These are absolutely gorgeous. They are so beautiful in bouquets or left in the garden. Perfect addition to your cottage garden or a mixed cut flower garden. They go really well with the, with the Grace Ward. The contrast is really lovely. And Dusty Miller. And Dusty Miller with these poppies would look so stunning in a bouquet. I might have to do that, although I don't know if I want to sacrifice them. This is the first time a lizard has ever visited my garden and I am so excited. I've never seen one here before. They're all over my city, but for some reason, I only had snakes here for years and then the snakes disappeared. And I have a lizard. I'm so excited. This made my month. It is so cute. It was jumping around the fence and it's super camera shy, but I'm using my zoom to get close enough to see it. So, so cute. I hope it has a family here somewhere. I absolutely love lizards. They are the coolest creatures. You are so, so cute. My five variety plum tree. And it's not doing as well as it looks. It was absolutely full of flowers in the early spring, but it's got massive amounts of issues right now. We've got leaves that are not looking so hot. I believe this is some kind of fungal infection similar to peach leaf curl. I don't know if it's the exact same thing or if it's a different version of it. Many of the flowers just browned. I don't think they're developing into plums or are going to. Like we've got tons of this browning all over the tree and the most intriguing thing that I have ever seen I'm about to show you on this tree. From a distance, you probably can't even see it, but let's zoom in. Here's a further look at the plum tree. So many flowers that are spent and don't look like there's any plums coming. I did note several of these little ladybugs in the tree, though I don't see any aphids or ants, so I'm not sure what's going on yet, but I'm sure that the other bugs must be around somewhere. On the entire tree that had hundreds if not thousands of flowers, this is the only branch that I can see with little plums that have formed. So we might get five or six plums unless there's more hidden in this tree that I am unaware of. I'm going to look at the next showstopper in the garden. That is my ground cover rock rose. It is absolutely stunning and massive. It is the perfect thing to cover up weeds. You may not be able to tell in this view. There's a few weeds growing through my rock rose. Let's get a little closer right here. But you can hardly tell, it really blends in with everything else. At the back, that's not a weed, it's a daffodil that is overgrown, the foliage. But it just takes over and I absolutely love these. 
I absolutely love the orange flowers. They are so gorgeous. You can use them in your hair for a little extra fun in your hairstyle or you can make miniature bouquets with them. You can dry them in dried flower arrangements, dry them for dried flower craft projects. So versatile and such a lovely drought resistant ground cover. If you want more information, I will link my evergreen ground cover video and you can check it out and learn more about this beautiful plant. Coming this way, this is one of my knockout roses just starting to bloom. This is the double pink knockout rose. It is an outstanding performer in the garden year after year. Very easy to look after. Highly recommend for beginner gardeners who want to grow roses. One of the easiest roses to grow. This is what the flowers look like. So this is the double version. What the single version of the pink knockout rose looks like. This beautiful creature just landed on my leg when I walked into the backyard. So beautiful. I absolutely love these cinnabar moth. Coming this way along the fence border, we have a single pink knockout rose. Here's a little example of what the flowers look like. They basically are a single petal structure versus the double that we just looked at a moment ago. There's different flowers on it. The foliage on these roses comes out as a purpley brown almost and it is so lovely, almost burgundy. And then it changes into green later when it's more mature. And one of my favorite flowers in the garden coming this way. This is the Rose Nicole. I believe it is a Floribunda if I'm not mistaken. So gorgeous. Love the white with it's almost a neon pink around the edges. So pretty. Beside it, I have one of my gladioli blooming super early. This is kind of a purpley pink. Very, very lovely. It's more vibrant in person, but definitely love this flower. Coming this way, this is one of my Desert King fig trees. Supervisor is looking a little odd. And it didn't get many figs this year. It doesn't look like it's gonna have many. I cannot help but wonder if this is any way related to the fig tree massacre that we did in the fall. Maybe we took off too much. Maybe the tree is not happy with the volume that was removed from it. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure this fig tree is not going to produce anything this season. Very sad. We're going to take a quick look at the other fig tree, the other Desert King, and see if there's any promise there. But first, let's look at the foxglove beside my non-productive Desert King. It is starting to bloom and it is absolutely lovely. I have a lot more foxgloves this year than in previous seasons that all sell seeded around the garden. This way we have a scratchy supervisor man. Zipper. Hey. Zipper. Hey. You kicked rocks in my shoe, Zipper. This tree will slightly make up for my other tree. It was also massacred in the fall with my fig tree mass pruning, but it does have figs on it and they are, seem to be doing okay so far. But I do note there's a little discoloration on this particular fig. Zipper stop. Different view of the Desert King fig. There's a few other figs. Fingers. Fingers crossed that it's just affecting the single fig that I saw. There's nothing else ominous happening right now. I don't know for certain, but I'm really hoping that we do get figs on this tree that has quite a few. 
quick look at the peach tree. This is my coconut ice peach tree. Some of it does have peach leaf pearl, not the whole tree like last season, but we do have way more peaches than last year. Here's a quick little look at the peaches growing. And we have some more foxgloves that are about to start blooming. Just starting to get their flowers open. Very lovely. If I mixed this nine bark with Dusty Miller and those oriental poppies I showed you earlier, I think the bouquet would be absolutely stunning. I might have to try that. This is my gravel pathway. We have one of Cinderella's pumpkins that has sprouted here. One of my blueberry bushes has quite a few flowers on it. This is a calendula that is just starting to bloom that apparently ants and other insects seem to like. Didn't know that. What is that, a flying ant? What the heck? What kind of insect is this? Does anybody know? What are you, my friend? You are very interesting. I'm very intrigued by insect life. Here, I have two roses. I planted one this spring and one last summer. I don't remember which is which, but I am intrigued to see what the flowers will bring. I planted a secret row of sunflowers back here behind my good size Japanese maple and my remaining creeping thyme that I didn't get rid of when I made over this pathway is just starting to bloom. Coming up the gravel pathway, my nectarine has still not leafed out or flowered. This is a little concerning to me because it's the exact same thing that happened to my first nectarine and I don't know what's going on with these trees. That's what happened last season at the start with my very first nectarine. These are sunflowers. Down here we have cucumbers planted. And here's another fig tree and some zucchini plants. Quick little overview of the pathway. in the garden. Here's the cutest yellow rose. This is a miniature rose. I actually thought it died. This was one my parents gave me from their garden several years ago. It has hardly grown. Every year gets one or two flowers and this is what they look like. They are so beautiful and so cute. Thank you so much for watching my quick little garden tour. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you've loved this if you'd love to see more garden tours in the future and leave me a comment down below and tell me what's your favorite thing that's blooming right now. Hope you're having some lovely spring weather and we will see you very soon in another video. Happy gardening!